و این فیلم مینیس ایت ریدی ای 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 Okay, is the host. Okay. He speak in first time. <laughs> yeah, why? Why time? Why a second? Estamos, estamos enlazando la transmisión. Wait a minute, guys. So how's Berlin, Toby? Oh, it's good. Summer is starting. So everybody's ah. outside. Many uh, exhibitions, parties. Everybody is in the parks. It's good Coming time. Out. No, it's not yeah. no, 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 And any news in in Mexico? Well, we miss you. We, we want you here. What are you doing? Uh, well, this week the Congress, we, um, Henry Schaffant and Craig Castleman came from the U.S. They, oh, really? They, they 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 did the opening day on Tuesday for the Congress in Unam. Wow. So that was really cool. They showed a, a lot of new uh, new photos, at least for me. So that was really nice. Not the, bad. And not, they are staying for a bit and hanging out in the city or? Yeah, this week. They're going to be here this week. And I don't know when they're leaving, but I think this Sunday or Monday. Wow, not bad. No, not bad. And the guys are painting. They got a huge um, fabric. Okay, off here. Start now, please. We are Buenas on tardes. Air. Buenos días a toda la comunidad de la ENA, los estudiantes. Only English. Only English. Only English. Um, welcome to the Estéticas de la Calle Congress. We're here starting with Tobias. We'd like to welcome him and give him a huge, huge welcome. Letting us know for, for sharing with us his book, Bitte Leben, Urban Kunst and Subculture in Berlin, 2003-2021. Um, I'm going to give the word to Tobias and he will explain to us what his book is about. Hello, hi there. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting unfortunately in Berlin. Also the project I'm uh, explaining you is uh, written in German, but will be hopefully available in English and Spanish too. Uh, yeah, sorry. So I speak in English because I think the conference is now like that. Um, yeah, what I'm talking about is uh, not only to show, tell about a book, but also to present a network of urban artists, uh, activists, and write to the city um, activists from Berlin, but that's also connected internationally uh, with many people. So maybe we've met uh, some of you already in beginning of March in Berlin. There was some kind of festival together with Illegal Squad, um, also with an exhibition of photos of the book. Uh, also, I made a presentation in presence. Um, so just about me, I'm artist, uh, but also 
So I'm uh, I'm communication designer working as artist. So I'm part of the story I'm telling about, but also I'm uh, working for an archive of pub and uh, subculture in Berlin, Archiv der Jugendkulturen. Um, so the goal is we are running there the graffiti archive to uh, collect stories uh, and materials about the graffiti scene to make them accessible, but also to open up discussions about developments in the scene, but also to show all the links between, uh, for example, city development, um, uh, political development, um, and also the art fields. And so the story I'm uh, I'm showing you now is from Berlin, but it's very related also to, for example, cities like Mexico. So I will uh, now go on to split my screen. Uh, so I hope you can see it now. You see my screen? I see it. Yes, okay, perfect. So. Uh, so it's full screen now, I hope. Is it in full screen now? Okay, perfect. Um, so um, the topics I'm speaking about, uh, we don't have so much time, is about uh, the topic of archiving subcultures, especially underground subcultures, like for example, the graffiti culture, about creating artist collectives and doing art collectively, um, about um, visualizing uh, social protest as an artist, uh, also about all the international connections. I will also show a little bit of uh, Mexico, about the topic of city development and gentrification that is very connected, but also about the topic, what it is all about. So maybe to create utopias, uh, or visions of utopia through art. Um, I start this, uh, we started this project uh, with Reclaim Your City, which is a network, uh, not only of artists, but also of uh, photographers, uh, political activists, uh, activists uh, and uh, many other people. Um, we started this project in, in 2003 with the rise of uh, the urban art and street art movement, I think internationally. Uh, I think uh, in Berlin in 2003, uh, the streets of the cities like uh, started to change a lot because the uh, older graffiti scene um, turned into more artistic and no, not really as uh, in wrong, wrong word, uh, like uh, try to paint other stuff than just names in the streets, uh, try to find out about another uh, artistic materials like posters, stencils, and so on. And so uh, the city of Berlin was changing a lot in this period. Like you could see in 2003, uh, artists uh, like this time very unknown, like Banksy, Shepard Ferry, and many others came to Berlin influenced many other artists and uh, was a big boom of uh, this new wave of uh, urban art in the city. I think maybe the same happened in many other cities all over the world. I know from Mexico a little bit that also similar things happened in the same period that was probably because of the rise of uh, internet and that internet was available everywhere. Um, in the world and people could inspire themselves online or each other, uh, seeing each other really from far away and making new connections even online, but then later on the streets. Uh, so many photographers uh, took the chance to take photos. Uh, so um, digital cameras were available and accessible in this time a lot. So we went around uh, with many photographers, finding all the spots for the um, for the paintings and artworks. Made maps uh, of it, and also we could use the whole knowledge by spotting we got by spotting graffiti, also to paint and also to find um, new spots uh, to do. Uh, to do painting actions or any kind of uh, activities. That was possible in Berlin because after the fall of the wall, many places were still abandoned because it was unclear who was the owner. 
And um, so there were a lot of free spaces uh, that could be taken for non-commercial cultural activities. Uh, for example, beginning of 2000, scenes like that were quite normal in Berlin because you had in the center of the city a lot of abandoned places that were occupied uh, from people uh, like here uh, living in trailer parks in the city to experience alternative ways of living, um, to paint in the abandoned fabrics, to make big rave parties there. So Berlin is very famous, for example, for all these subculture activities, also for techno. And the main thing is that uh, since the beginning of the 80s in Berlin, there were a lot of free spaces that got occupied and used for strictly non-commercial use because there was no ownership, um, no regulations um, by the police because uh, and officials because people just uh, took the spaces and uh, because people didn't pay rent, it was possible to do art, artistic uh, works, parties or whatever strictly without having money or the goal of uh, getting money out of it involved. So many collectives were built at the same, in, in this moment, um, not only painting graffiti, but also doing rave parties, mixing uh, techno, uh, rave, occupation culture at all, um, because it was clear in this period that all these scenes were mixing and it's not only about uh, a painting genre or an art genre, it's really like about uh, seeing the city as an artwork or something like that and really changing the view and the use of the city collectively. So uh, many of those, of, um, those collectives and groups that were built in this time uh, met in exhibitions uh, called also Reclaim Your City. Reclaim Your City was an archive at the moment, an uh, online archive. But the idea was to do exhibitions, not to do an exhibition because we thought the city is our exhibition space. So we don't need galleries or anything else. But the exhibitions should be a meeting point for bringing all the people together to meet at one point in one place sharing experience, speaking about the things we are doing, and also um, to start uh, new actions and build networks uh, for the time after the exhibitions. So uh, Reclaim Your City is still not really uh, visible as some kind of group, but it's really more like an informal, I don't know if you can say network or movement, whatever, connecting uh, many strings in the intersection of, uh, of uh, visual art, uh, urban art, public art, and political activism and taking part in the city. So the Reclaim Your City Network uh, made also occupation actions to uh, create uh, temporary uh, new galleries but also got connected with uh, bigger occupations like in Hamburg, this is a Gängeviertel, uh, to connect with artists who occupied uh, in one of the most expensive uh, districts of Hamburg, a huge area to have a huge non-commercial cultural space. And uh, also uh, people from that network and joined uh, squads or occupations that were existing already since the 80s and the 90s in Berlin um, to make their struggles against eviction and for uh, cheap and affordable uh, living and uh, rents uh, visible to the outside. So, uh, so many uh, graffiti artists, urban artists, uh, offered those groups uh, having non-commercial spaces, uh, their, artist, their power as artist uh, to show the political ideas of these non-commercial self-organized spaces to the outside. This was quite uh, successful in many cases. Um, so there were uh, places like in Brunnenstraße in the center, but also in Liebigstraße and Rigastraße, uh, where many of these occupied uh, buildings are still there existing. Uh, just to uh, show with the paintings that um, there are other, that 
the people living in, the, in these places and using the spaces have the power to decide uh, collectively um, how is the living inside, but also how the, their buildings should look, look like. And it works quite well also for uh, to create media attention, but also to make visible in the city how the city is developing. Berlin has a huge problem with gentrification and uh, private privatization, and many of these formerly sub non-commercial subculture places are at the moment in danger to get evicted because of many reasons, financial crisis in 2000, many investors bought uh, buildings, the buildings, uh, for example, in Berlin were sold to investors, to the next investors. And so you can see, and see in this uh, picture um, how Berlin is changing, like you see in the background, all these uh, new, um, new, build, new made buildings of big companies like uh, Amazon, uh, Mercedes-Benz, and so on and so on, uh, who evicted many of formerly subcultural places uh, to buy to build expensive uh, expensive uh, real estate uh, buildings and uh, and uh, so on and so on. So the idea was to show, make visible in the landscape of the city what's happening. That still there are places like Kirby, a strictly non-commercial cultural place occupied in the 90s. Um, is still existing and they are re resisting against um, this idea. Also with a clear message, hands off our homes and that we stay united. And as an artist, we are supporting those spaces. Also um, the idea uh, was to, to connect with political movements, uh, with striking tenants, because to say that the fights for non-commercial art and culture, but also the fight for right to people to live in the places where they want to live, um, for the refugees, for the tenants who are in danger of a victim, that this should be all connected and coming together. So we made also a lot of murals uh, together in collaboration with refugees who usually have no voice uh, in the public but also with the striking tenants. So uh, I just have to may, uh, show quickly so some examples of groups uh, doing offering their uh, artist uh, skills uh, for, for those movements. But also it's uh, clear that many people and especially artists are attracted and wherever attracted from the subcultures in Berlin. I came to Berlin, I got involved in this and so there are many networks all over the world between artists from Berlin to other cities all over the world. For example, uh, I think in 2016, um, a group of, out of this network came to Mexico City um, for a research project um, to find out about places, um, uh, artist spaces, um, places and workshops uh, in the intersection of, um, of uh, political uh, urban activism and uh, urban art and uh, also free non-commercial art. Um, so also here was clearly one goal to do researches, to meet people, build networks, but also produce our own artworks in the city. Also, um, yeah, friends we visited in Chanti Olin, one of the occupied buildings still existing in this period. Um, yeah, we also met some of the artists already before in Berlin and, uh, and uh, tried to document also those places in other cities to tell the stories uh, also in Berlin and to discuss about um, the strategies and the goals. Um, also, there are groups, or oh should um, uh, need to hurry up a bit. Uh, also, there are groups uh, from, from Berlin um, uh, using their knowledge uh, about uh, how to organize uh, working worker struggles or 
who knows about uh, union rights or workers or the rights workers uh, should have uh, should, should have so they go to other countries in Latin America and uh, also in South Spain to uh, paint murals with the workers together but also like explaining them their rights and how they can organize to fight for better working conditions yeah also there were many uh, travels to India also international campaigns in the US and uh, that made really visible that also through internet all these activities like protests against racism and racist police violence that happened in, in New York caused uh, whole cars, painted whole cars in, in, in Brussels uh, for the same topic, ended up in big demonstrations in Berlin. So all these activities are globally connected. Um, yeah, I will skip this a bit. This is about the topic of gentrification. So the city of Berlin is uh, really changing a lot at the moment. Like after this explosion of urban art, there is this big topic of that uh, also maybe the artist uh, made the city even more, more attractive with all the activities they are doing there. And this is a really big contradiction the artists need to, to deal with that Berlin, a city like Berlin is very attractive for the art and subcultures. But at the same time, this attractivity um, is bringing uh, people with more income uh, in the places who are interested in art and the city is changing a lot. So they are part, the artists are becoming a part of the problem they are fighting and they don't know how to deal with it. This is, for example, a mural, famous mural in the center of Berlin of the artist Blue from Italy, maybe some of you know of him, also coming from the squatting movement in Italy, who decided to destroy one of his uh, most important uh, painting because it was painted in a place that was occupied before, got evicted, and he didn't want to have uh, his art just as a decoration for uh, the next investors. Now there is uh, a new head office of Zalando at the same place. So I think it was quite well. Also the Berlin Kids, another group made visible uh, what is happening in Berlin. So maybe less doing, the idea was the main money discussions between the artists doing maybe less art and less nice art, but more signs of protest to make really visible uh, what is going on and to show anger and frustration and uh, just fuck off to the investors, for example. And uh, also, of course, there are a lot of discussions at the moment that most of the real estate companies uh, in Germany are trying now to reach graffiti writers and urban artists um, because they realized that a painted building has more value on the market than a non-painted uh, building. And this is also something the artists have to deal with. And uh, also here you can see like how Berlin changed. This is, I showed you before, um, these illegal rave parties uh, on the abandoned fabric and so on with the skyline. This is more or less the same place and how it looks now. And uh, so the strategy of artists changed a bit. Uh, some decided, uh, okay, if the city is like that, then maybe we have to uh, make the conflicts visible instead of doing nice paintings or clearly write the messages uh, like stop expulsions and uh, yeah, the people should stay in their house and to write this uh, clearly as messages on big visible spots. And also what is about to end uh, this is to create some kind even in this uh, capitalist uh, society with all the things that is uh, causing and uh, producing. So maybe one of the idea to do art is to make other views of the society or other um, possibilities visible, to create utopias, to, uh, to think about utopias of non-hierarchical -hierarch uh, societies, of non-commercial societies. And uh, so also ideas, for example, of festivals like Fusion Festival or many others in Germany that are quite big is 
to create spaces through the art and music um, that are out of the logic of the capitalist market thinking and having spaces where it's possible to meet on a flat, uh, uh, like equally and uh, creating uh, art without any commercial intentions. But this is more or less, more and more uh, quite difficult. That's why uh, many artists uh, took part in conferences not only to do art or to show their own artworks, but really like to speak about all these topics. So there was a Reclaim Your City conference, also speaking about all these topics I was describing before, but also sharing Nolan's experience and also how to uh, mix up with all these protest uh, movements. But also what is quite ex uh, interesting that um, many of the urban artists of uh, the Reclaim Your City network uh, were invited in the past years to take part in the hacking conference, the Chaos Communication Congress. I think it's one of the biggest hacker congresses coming out from the yeah, hacking scene beginning of the 80s, or I think yeah, in 81 it was founded. And uh, also it's interesting that there are similar discussions uh, going on in the hacking scene and the urban art field because uh, the hackers had the idea of creating a free a free virtual space uh, like called the internet uh, where everything, everybody could meet and communicate equally and uh, having a huge public space and uh, common, uh, common public space that is in danger now by privatization. Uh, you heard about uh, Elon Musk, about Facebook and all these things. Uh, like, so the internet is not anymore free. It's also under attack of privatization. So similar, like all the discussions about the public space and how it's used in the streets. Um, so there are a lot of intersections uh, people need to discuss. So to end up this, this, this is some kind of uh, drawing interview we made with many of the collectives taking part in the urban art uh, field and our surrounding because we thought even maybe our art is used for the wrong causes in the end. And uh, we are producing the problems we want to fight that maybe the utopian thing in our doing and the things we are doing is maybe what we, ex what we are experiencing on the way doing and also how we meet and build networks and that it would be nice maybe to visualize those networks and maybe to speak about this, this art as a tool to build networks and new forms of society. So this is just to show that also uh, this archiving process is collectively, so also in all these events, speaking about all the history, it's about bringing all the people involved together, meet, uh, mix up, everybody is allowed to change the story, to write comments. And this is also put back to the main text that was used uh, to, to the book I was producing that is also working like an archive of this underground uh, culture. So this is a guest book of the people involved. And also for me it's important, for example, uh, like the exhibition that is, I don't know if it's uh, shown in, in your conference, um, also from Berlin, but also that I'm speaking here, but also that uh, some of people, some of the people of our um, collective went in March to, to Mexico to do this festival. It's uh, really about archiving, uh, meeting other people, networking, um, building, making new artworks, but also creating networks, uh, coming back, sharing the stories again in other places. Mm -hmm. And uh, so seeing art really as a tool, as a social tool, as a tool for many other things than just uh, painting pictures. And I think it's much more than this. And uh, yeah, so this, um, thanks for listening. And uh, I'm done with this presentation. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry for being uh, at this point right here. But um, in behalf of the Ina and Ina, we're giving you this um, diploma. 
Okay, that I'm showing and that we will be sending you through mail and eventually get there. But before we go, we pass to the next table. I believe everybody is interested here to, to know, first of all, like how you both in the panel met. This is something fundamental for, for the bonding no, that you have built with Mexico. And also, well, as another set of uh, ideas that I've selected here from, uh, from the public, we have such a, a good amount of people listening from in Mexico City, all of us interested in, in uh, the art and graffiti and different stuff. But I can see, and I, I congratulate for this um, presentation because Sometimes we tend to not value, no? Sometimes you are you're telling us that through the art, the interventions that you made in public spaces that were abandoned, that were not used, or that were going to be transformed, this intervention means a lot to many people because you're refunctionalizing. And then making it an archive, that for me sometimes, or for some of us may sound like, not fitting like concepts that are, that are not fitting no like how are you transforming something urban something yes it's where you know huh? so oh, you're here you're here still and then how 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 can you transform these in um, so so that you can get to uh, make people re-symbolize re-signify the spaces but also change the um the concept of what we want to preserve no, I, I can think also this movement in Mexico is very, very, let's say, famous in the latest years uh, in Mexico City has happened. No, that we see quite incredible uh, interventions in underpasses, as you say, no, the same, the same kind of uh, buildings. And I would also like to ask you, how do you uh, under this concept of archive, but a living archive, not a locked down or locked in archive, you transform all these into archive to be preserved, no? And how are you to preserve it when it's so ephemeral, no? That's also some concept. It's wonderful. And so, well, I think that's it so that you can both uh, tell us a little. And, and if you have any example of Mexico City, what uh, was the... What was the, what you intervened when you came here? That would be awesome for all of us to see. But the first, of course, where you got all these funding, the two of you in the panel. Um, yeah, so how, how we met or how we know each other yeah. is uh, I think uh, through Illegal Squad, the graffiti shop in, uh, in the center, Okay. I think uh, also Alfonso is a really good networker and connector uh, mm -hmm. and bringing a lot of people together. And in all the, every time I'm in Mexico City, like he's helping out, bringing people together and he's like, hey, you have to meet this guy. And also, for example, with Ophier, uh, he just gave me once his phone number and said, yeah, call this guy. You should know him. And uh, yeah, also a really nice example, I have to say, like also what I experienced a lot in, in Mexico, like there are yeah, people, people like in, in the legal squad shop, like really into it and helping to connect people all over the places. And uh, yeah, I think we in Germany, we have really have to learn this a lot. Um, yeah, so... And also for, for Mexico, like the, what we did as an intervention. So, um, so many friends were just um, traveling to explore the city, did some graffitis here and there. And especially for, um, for the thing, what we did in March was like a huge mural in Faro del Oriente. That was a place where, um, yeah, where our event happened. And uh, we made a huge collective mural with all the uh, painters and crews, but also with just random people who took part and make, they made there a big mural. I don't know if it's still existing there. 
and okay. yeah and also we created a map uh, that is shown here and of yes uh, screen um, with all the places we visited so okay. that was also for the next people coming from berlin to skip some of the things we had to do here like to come directly to the workshops and um, to got, get in contact so i think also this is uh, beside of painting a mural i think also like a map is a really useful also artistic tool for the next one to inter uh, to intervene and also um, what ofia showed in uh, the one squad we painted a bit in the inside on the roof and also the backside that is i think not visible anymore so yeah but um yeah sometimes it's difficult also to yeah to have a proper mural in also in mexico needs a lot of time and uh yeah, so the main goal was just to go around, paint here and then and meet. Would you consider that you received or in this project now that you are taking back or regaining spaces, you have certain amnesty. Did you experience the same in Mexico or you are trying, you're always presenting as the, some opposition from authorities or from certain groups? And the other, the other question that we might be thinking of is, don't you fear that this at the beginning is a process, then as it's resignified, you might be then becoming what you are fighting in the first place, or it just is a, it's going to remain being part of the subculture, underground cultures, and be valued, but differently. I don't know if I make myself clear because it's like making it an archive, making the new heritage or the new trends, you become what you were in the first place, let's say replacing, you know? In this aim to get the, to, to have the, to exercise the right for the city, you no? Know? Yeah. Like, you can keep you can leave it like a if if you if you want to answer it if not you're welcoming um yeah i'm not sure if i understood the the question right but um what yeah, happens when you occupy a space no a space that was abandoned nobody cared for it and now you're using it and then you make people you make everybody look at that new heritage no, it's now the trend is now what it's uh, fine to see, to admire, and then you were supposed to be transgressive, no, but now you are in the in the scene. I mean, these kind of things, no? So don't you fear that you become what you were fighting in the first place? That's pretty much what I'm trying to, what we're trying yeah. to think, no? If it's an alter it was alternative and it's now the trend. Yeah, of course. I mean, this is always the danger, but... Uh... I think for me, it's also like it's an expression. I mean, it's a visual expression of the ongoing things. So I can just give an input. Uh, I know in many cases uh, that, uh, yeah, of course, I am in this trap always as an, as an artist, but I can also, with the documentation, I can also place an artwork or mural or whatever, and then also see how is the reaction and how is the development uh, around. I mean, there are also many questions with painting. I mean, I paint without asking. And also I have to think a lot about privilege that, for example, I know that uh, if I come as a white guy to Mexico, for example, I will have probably less prob problems to, to paint with the police. I can pay the bills from the police easily and so on mm -hmm. and so on. And then also to to deal with uh, all the things, but also I give an input, I experience what happens, I'm in contact with local artists, and um, then I try, or I really try also to, to learn from the things. So I try to learn about the society and the place in the city I am in through the painting. And even, I don't know, I know many, have a lot of experience of 
artworks uh, we made that uh, went uh, in a really wrong direction but it's also for me interesting to catch the stories uh, that happens after and uh, yeah i think this is also the important thing with the archiving or why for me archiving is uh, so important part of it and uh, also to share all this experience and uh, make it accessible for all the other people and it's naturally of course difficult like to run a graffiti archive is not working because you cannot archive graffitis, but you can archive the stories behind. And this you can do with speaking like how I do now or with taking photos. And there's also a physical archive of uh, magazines and stuff like that we are running in Berlin. Well, would you, Ophir, would you like to say anything? We need, need to let the next panel to start, but uh, we thank you very much. And Ophir, quieres decir algo? You want to say anything? Yes, I would like to say that um, Toby's exhibition will be at Casa Frisac in Tlalpan. Some of the artwork and the photo he did, he's going to be presented there. So. I would like to invite everybody to come and check it out. It will be a part of the other exhibition with Craig Castleman and Henry Schalfent, which are two big also photographers in, in, in the graffiti world and in the urban art movement. Okay, Toby, last words before we go. And we thank you very much for, for everything, for attending this conference. Yeah, last words uh, from my side. It's not my photos. It's a collective. It's a collective work. So okay. uh, all the photos are signed with Reclaim Your City, and many people are involved. And it's a collective thing. I'm just the one speaking here, but there are many more people behind. Okay, and we'll be sending you any the questions because I'm pretty much sure that everybody here wanted to speak and ask you and it changed, no? points of view. So thank you very much. Please, un aplauso para Toby. Y los invita a Casa Frisac, en donde tienen parte de la exhibición para, para que conozcan el trabajo del colectivo Rick, o Rick. Muchas gracias.